In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this procedural clay material in Blender. And this is the type of material that you could add onto like a digital sculpt if you wanted to make it look like it was made out of actual clay or just some other clay object. You can see right here, this is a digital sculpt that I created a little while ago, and it looks really nice with this procedural clay material. And this clay material does work great in both Cycles and Eevee. I prefer using the Cycles render engine because Cycles is a bit more realistic, and an Eevee it's slightly laggy in the viewport just because there is a lot of detail there. So I would recommend using cycles if you want to get a little more realism. But as you can see, this does look pretty good in Eevee as well. And if you'd like to purchase this procedural material, then you can purchase it on my Gumroad store. And you also get access to the procedural material if you join my Patreon page. And checking out my Gumroad store and Patreon page are great ways to help support me and my YouTube channel. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural material. Materials. So every time I create 10 more procedural materials, then I create another procedural material pack. So the link's in the description if you'd like to check those out. And if you'd like to learn how to create all of my procedural materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material playlist on YouTube. All right, so let me just show you what I have in the 3D space. So I pressed Shift A and I went right down here and added an icosphere. And then right behind me on the add icosphere settings, if you open that up, I just turned up the subdivisions really high to like a 7 so that's very smooth and then I just shaded the object smooth and then also I just imported this sculpture that I did a little while ago this is a digital sculpt that I created if you'd like to watch my blender sculpting tutorials I will also have a link in the description to the playlist where you can check out my different sculpting tutorials so I just imported this head sculpt into this blender file just so that we can see what the material would look like on a sculpted head bust and then to get some nice bright lighting I added this plane and this plane has a subdivision surface modifier on it so that it is circular and then I just gave it an emission material and I turned the strength up to 50 just to add some nice bright lighting and then and then I also wanted some nice realistic lighting and reflections so right over here on the world I added in this machine shop 02 1k HDR so this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com links in the description if you'd like to download it so right over here on the world you can just add a world and then click over on the color click on the yellow dot and you can just add the environment texture and then you can open up the HDRI. And I also just turned the strength down a little bit to 8.8. .8. And then in this tutorial, I will also be using the Node Wrangler add-on. So if you don't have that enabled, you can click on Edit and open up the Preferences. And then over there on the Add-ons tab, you can just search for the Node Wrangler and just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on. All right, so I'm just going to select this object and I'm going to click on New. And I'm going to call this Procedural Clay Material. And then I'm going to click and drag right here. And I'm going to drop this material onto these other objects. So the head sculpt and then also the eyes for the head sculpt. So to start off, I want to add some little subtle index to make it look like someone was using their thumb or their fingers to kind of push in the clay and kind of shape the clay. So to do that, I'm going to press Shift A. I'm going to go to the search here, and I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture, and let's just drop this down here. And then we turned on the Node Wrangler add-on, so you can hold down the Control and Shift key and then select nodes, and that is going to preview the node. Now, I also want to select the Voronoi, and I'm going to press Control T, and that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping, but I don't need the mapping, so I can just select it and press X to delete it. And then I want to plug the object up to the vector so that it's using the object coordinates. And the object coordinates are going to place the textures on the objects more evenly. Now I don't want those edges to be quite as sharp. So right here on the F1, I'm going to instead change this to smooth F1. And now you can see that that is much more smooth. And then you can play around with the smoothness right here by changing the smoothest value. But I'm going to turn it all the way up to 1 because I do want it to be very smooth. And then I'm going to turn the scale on the Voronoi up to like a 7. Now I want to use another texture to distort this texture a little bit just to make it look a little bit more random. So I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to search for a noise texture and let's click on this noise texture and I'm going to drop it right in here between the object coordinates and the vector. And that way this noise texture is going to distort the vector so it's going to distort the placement of the Voronoi texture. Now I don't want it to be distorted this much because that's a lot. I want it to mostly keep its shape. So I'm just going to bring the noise texture down and then I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a mix RGB. Let's just drop the mix RGB right in here after the noise texture. So now what I want to do is 
is I want to take this object here and I want to put this into color one and then this noise texture, the color is going to go into color two. So I can now change this factor and that's going to determine how distorted it's going to be. So if you turn the factor all the way up to one, you can now see that the Voronoi is very distorted, but if you turn it all the way down to zero, it's not distorted at all. So I just want it to be distorted a little bit. So I'm going to change this value to a point 06. So just a 0 0.06 on the factor there on the mix. And so it's just a little bit distorted. Now I also want to add a subtle texture for the fingerprints. So to do that, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for a wave texture. And let's actually drop the wave texture right down here. So now this Voronoi texture is going to distort the wave texture. So we have the noise texture distorting the Voronoi a little bit and then the Voronoi is going to distort the wave texture. So normally if you unplug this, just unplug the distance from the Voronoi, you can see the wave texture is just having these waves, it's just having these stripes going up and down. But if you now take the distance and put that into the vector, it's going to use these circles from the Voronoi and it's going to use that to distort it. And so now the wave texture is going to be distorted and so those waves are going to be in a circular shape. And that looks kind of like fingerprints. Now on the wave texture, I'm going to change the bands to rings. And then right down here on the scale, I just want to turn the scale up to like a 10. So there are more of those rings. And then all of these other values, I'm going to turn to zero. So the detail to zero, distortion to zero, the detail scale, detail roughness, and the phase offset. Just make sure all of these other values are set to zero. All right, now that's looking pretty cool, but I don't want those fingerprints to be all over the place. I just want them to be in some areas. So what I'm going to do is press shift A, and I'm going to go to the search here and search for a mix RGB, and I want to drop the mix RGB right here. So now what I can do is I can actually take the distance from the Voronoi, and I can put this in into the factor. And then the wave texture is going to be going into color one and then color two. I want to click on this and I'm just going to make this fully white. Now I need to make this factor more contrasty because it's not very contrasty. So I'm going to press shift A. I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for the color ramp and let's drop the color ramp right in here between the Voronoi distance and the mix factor. So right here. So now if I start to bring these together, it's going to make that more contrasty. And as I make it more contrasty, you can see that now those fingerprints are only going to be in some places here and there. So I'm going to drag the black value to kind of about here and then I'll bring the white value over as well. So it's it's pretty contrasty. So now you can see that it looks like there's just some fingerprints and some thumbprints here and there around the clay. So I now want to use this texture here to give a little bit of bump into the principle just to make it look like it's slightly bumpy, kind of like the fingerprint just kind of made the clay slightly bumpy. So I'm going to take the color and I'm going to put that into the normal on the principle. And then I need to convert this to normal data because if I control shift and select the principle, you can see there's some weird shading issues. That's because this is color data, but we need to convert it to normal data. So I'm going to press shift A. I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for a bump node and let's drop the bump node right in here between the mix and the normal. And then we want the color to be going into the height. And so now that we've converted that to normal data, the fingerprint texture is actually bumping in a little bit. Now it's very, very strong right now. So I'm going to turn the strength way down to make it a lot more subtle. So I'm just going to turn the strength value to like a 0 0.05. So now if you zoom in here, you can kind of see it a little bit, but it's very subtle. And to be able to see this a little bit better, Better. let's actually take the base color and I want to turn the base color down to kind of like a gray color and now you can see that a little bit better so there's just some subtle fingerprints here and there now I also want to add two more layers of bump so I want to add the Voronoi into the bump to just make it look like some little parts have been pushed in a little bit and then I also want to add some noise into the bump just to make everything a little bit more noisy so I'm going to select this bump node and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and let's just drop it down here and then I want the normal to be going into the normal and that is how we can add multiple bump maps together by plugging the normal into the normal. So I now want to take the factor from the noise texture and I'm going to plug that into the height value of this bump. And now you can see that it just has a little bit of bump all over the place. So I now want to add the Voronoi texture in as well. So I'm going to take this bump node and I'll press shift D to duplicate it. Let's drop it down here. And then again, the normal can be going into the normal. And so now we can add more information into the height value of this bump. So what I'm going to do is take the distance from the Voronoi. I'm going to plug the distance into the height value of this last bump. 
Now I do want that to be just a little bit more strong, so I'm gonna turn this strength value right here to like a 0.07, just so that it's slightly more bumpy. And then this noise texture actually doesn't have very much detail. You can see right there, it really doesn't have that much detail. So right here on this noise texture, I'm gonna turn the detail up. So I'm gonna turn the detail up to like a six. So now it has a lot more noise in there. You can just see there's all this little noise right there. So if I control shift and select this bump node, you can see that this is just giving those little indents kind of where your fingers might be pressing in if you're sculpting the clay and then if I control shift and select this bump node right here this is just giving a little bit of noise all over the clay and then if I control shift and select this bump node that is just giving a little bit of fingerprints and you can see that the fingerprints are right where those little indents are because we are using this Voronoi texture and this Voronoi texture is also distorting the wave texture and so that way where the fingerprints are that's also where the clay is going to be pushing in a little bit so I can now just control shift and select the principled BSDF so I now want to give a little bit of very variation in the roughness. So I'm going to take the distance from the Voronoi texture and I'm going to plug that into the roughness on the principle. Now I want to have more control over this so I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp. Let's just click on the color ramp and I'm just going to drop the color ramp right down here. Now I actually want to switch these values so I'm going to drag the black tab over here, drag the white tab over there, and then just drag the black tab over. So the white one's going to be over here and the black one's going to be over here. So we can now change the black colors and that is going to change the the roughness. So if you turn this black tab all the way up, it's going to be very rough. And so it looks like the clay is much more dried out. Or if you want to make the clay look more shiny, you can turn it much more down to black. And when it's more black, it's going to be much more shiny. And you could also take the white tab and you could drag the white tab down if you want to be very, very wet. But that is a bit too wet for me. I think that is way too wet. So I'm going to keep this white tab at all the way to white. And then this black tab, I can just turn it up a little bit to make it a little bit more rough. But I do want it to be pretty shiny. I do kind of like that shininess here and there. So I'm just going to leave this kind of at a gray color like that. All right, so this clay material is looking pretty cool, but I wanna add three different variations of color. So I'm gonna take the distance from the Voronoi and I'm gonna plug that into the base color. Now, this doesn't look very good because it's white with little black dots, so I wanna change the colors. So I'm gonna press Shift A, I'm gonna to go to the search here, and I'm gonna search for a color ramp, and let's drop the color ramp right in here, right before the base color. So now I can just change these colors to make the different colors that I want. So the three variations are gonna be a gray colored clay, a brown colored clay and then a red colored clay. So first I'm going to make the brown one. So I'm going to click on this black tab. I'm going to click right here and I'm going to make it a bit brighter and then I'm going to make it kind of a brownish kind of orangish color. And if you'd like to use the exact same color that I'm using then on this color here you can click over on the hex value and you can type in a hex value of 7a 5d 4c. So that is the exact color that I'll be using. And then this one right here, this is going to be a similar color. So I'm going to click on the white tab right here, but this one is going to be just a little bit darker. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using, then right over here on this color, on the color, if you go over to the hex value, you can type in 6d 544a. So those are the colors that I'm going to be using. So that is the first one. So that is the brown variation of clay. So what I'm now going to do is press shift A. I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for a reroute. I'm going to click on the reroute and I'm just going to drop it here. So I'm now going to take this color and I'm going to put it up to the base color, kind of bring this down, bring this reroute down here, and then I'm going to select the reroute and I want to duplicate it. So I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it, drop it here, shift D to duplicate it, drop it here. And then also I'm going to press B for the box select, just box select all of these and just kind of bring them over so we have a bit more space. So I'm now going to press shift A, I'm going to go to the search here, and I'm going to search for a hue saturation node, okay, so the hue saturation value. So what I now want to do is take this color ramp and I'm going to plug this up to this reroute and also up to this reroute, and then I'm going to take the hue saturation and I'm going to drop it right in here so that we have this other variation. And then I'm gonna take this hue saturation, I'll press Shift D to duplicate it, and we're gonna drop it down here. So we can now plug up these three different reroutes and that's going to change the variation of the color. Now I need to change the colors, so let's take this first one here, the top one, and I'm gonna plug this down here. So this first one is going to be the gray variation of clay. So to make it look gray, I'm going to take the saturation and I'm gonna turn that all the way to zero. And that way it's not going to use any color. And then I do wanna make it a bit darker, so I'm gonna take the 
the value and I'm going to turn the value down to like a 0.5 so now it is more gray and you could turn that down if you wanted to make it an even darker gray I like something like 0.5 all right so we have the first variation and that is the gray clay and then if you take this reroute right here and plug that into the base color that is the second variation which is the brown clay so I now want to make one more which is going to be a much more red clay so let's take this reroute we'll plug that into the base color and I can now change these colors so to make it look a little bit more red I want to change the hue so if you change the hue that's going to change the colors so to make it just a little bit more red I'm going to take the hue and I'm going to change that to a 0.48 so a 0.48 is now just going to make that a little bit more red and then I also want to make it more saturated so it's even more red so I'm going to turn the saturation to a 1.3 and that is quite a bit more saturated and then I do also want to make this a little bit darker so I can change the value and that's going to make it brighter or darker so I'm going to turn the value to like a 0.8 just so it's a little bit darker all right so now let me just make this a little bit bigger so you can see it so we now have the gray variation that's looking pretty cool we also have the brown variation and then we also have the red variation and that is the finished material so that is the procedural clay material so that's going to be it for this tutorial thank you for watching and i hope you enjoyed the tutorial and if you'd like to help support me and my youtube channel then you can purchase the project files on my gumroad store and also on my patreon page and you can also check out my blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials and if you'd like to watch more procedural material tutorials then you can check out my blender procedural material playlist on youtube all the links are in the description so i hope this was helpful and thank you for watching